Hey, how's it going everyone? It's your boy Wags here, and today I'm going to be going over 50 different things that you might not have known about in Shadows of Doubt. Now these are going to range from helpful tips to gameplay features and also just some fun stuff that I decided to throw in there. If you watch a lot of my videos, chances are you're going to know a good chunk of these. All I ask though is that if you learn one thing by the end of the video, or you just find the content entertaining and engaging, feel free to drop me a like, or even better, hit that subscribe button. I make a lot of Shadow of Doubt content on my channel, so if that's something you're interested in, I'd love it if you check it out. But for now, 50 things, let's go. Number 1. Did you know that you can track down a phone call, or even a phone number yourself? Just place the call yourself and remember what apartment you're calling from. After the call's been placed, head down to the basement of that apartment building and find this off-limits area. Dodge the laser camera and lockpick the telephone box. From here you can see every call placed between NPCs and the one we just placed ourselves, giving us the address for the phone number we just called. Number 2. If you prefer to keep quiet about your break-ins, you might want to try checking under the doormats for spare keys which can be used instead of trying to lockpick your way in. Number 3. Finding a building's blueprints, which are normally located in the security room of the building, will give your map the entire layout of the ventilation system, allowing you to accurately plan out your routes while venting. Number 4. If you're running low on lockpicks and you don't have the cash at the beginning of a game to buy them, the best place to find a decent stash is behind the counters at restaurants and on top of the washers and dryers inside the laundry mat. Both places should reward you with a hefty supply of lockpicks, at least until you can afford some more. Number 5. Not only can the fingerprint scanner be used to scan fingerprints, but it also doubles as a shoe size scanner as well. You can use this information and then compare it with your suspect's actual footwear to bring you one clue closer to solving your investigation. Number 6. There are cameras all over the place inside buildings, but it took me a while to discover these surveillance cameras that hover above the streets, and like other camera footage, it too can be checked. Just carefully pick open the box and begin searching for suspects. And this one brings me to number 7, which is, if you didn't know, you only have a limited time of 24 hours to check camera footage, meaning if your murder happened at noon on Tuesday, you have until noon on Wednesday to check the recordings or they'll be gone permanently. Number 8. To easily find a certain employee's fingerprint, all you have to do is scan the key code to their specific work locker. Either that, or their fingerprints will also appear over their individual employee photo. Number 9. You can unscrew light bulbs in hallways and in random apartments so that other NPCs have no ability to turn the lights on, allowing you to sneak around in the dark at your desire. Number 10. A trash can to the face will knock out any NPC instantly. I mean, there's a bunch of other objects that will too, but I mean come on, the trash cans are the most fun, and the best part is, they're everywhere. Number 11. You can create custom color strings to attach between your evidence, so you don't have to stick with the same boring red color. You then also have the option to name it as well. And number 12. For a cleaner look, to even bring your evidence board to life a little more, you can minimize evidence or even cross it out to bring attention to dead ends. Number 13. Some civilians in the city actually don't appear in the city directory because they're homeless. They're normally the ones crowding around the fires late at night, and you can even catch them sleeping in small huts or sheds like this. Because they don't have homes, they can be very difficult to track down sometimes. Number 14. By walking up to a door and clicking at the bottom of it, you can peek underneath it to see if there's possibly a light on or if somebody is walking around inside. Number 15. You can play pool at the bar, although people don't seem to like it very much. Number 16. If you're not fond of the current jobs you're receiving on your job boards, maybe they don't pay enough or maybe you're trying to make room for some apartment notices, all you have to do is accept the cases and then just close them out. It doesn't cost you anything and it clears up the board, and sooner or later the missions will pop back up for you to choose again. You're not missing out on anything. Number 17. At City Hall, there's a side room with a computer inside. Nearby, there will always be a password for this computer, and on this computer, you'll have access to the entire government database, allowing you to type in any citizen's name and print their entire file, giving you most of their information. Number 18, adding to this actually, most people familiar with this understand you have to type two letters for names to begin popping up. 
but if you wanted to cheat the system even more, you can type one letter followed by a space to search citizens by the last letter in their name. It's a much more efficient way to print files and search up unknown suspects. Number 19. In the tutorial mission, which begins in the starter city Charlotte Heights, our character first begins by waking up, talking about not being able to sleep ever since Sam left. There's a little more story to the tutorial, but it's a wonder if we'll ever receive more info about ourselves, our past, or even a further storyline. Who's Sam and what happened to them? Number 20. You can pass time pretty much wherever you can sit. There might be times when you need to wait for something or someone, so take a seat, look at your watch, set a timer, and you can exit whenever you like. Number 21. If you're having trouble getting someone to tell you their name, a funny workaround is actually take their picture, and then if you ask them if they know who it is, half the time they'll be like, that's me, and you'll have their name. Number 22. You can drop items and decorate areas however you like. By the way, I just want to say I was not expecting to do this much, but I just kept going and going, and here I just made up a straight buffet for the workers, I guess. Also, five minutes later, they turned off all the lights on me and walked out. May I remind you, this is a 24-hour diner. Number 23. You can hide inside cupboards. Number 24. If you don't have any lockpicks, you can run and bash your way into the door to knock it open. Just make sure no one's around to hear or see you. And paired with this, this brings us to our halfway point, number 25, which tends to be everyone's favorite. Speaking of bashing doors, an easy way to break into someone's house is to just bash the door while they're on the other side. Just watch. Number 26, you can talk to receptionists or managers and ask them about a tour. You can then purchase a guest pass for the property, and all areas where you'd normally be trespassing are free to be wandered. Number 27. A Bloodhound Tracker can be purchased at City Hall and can be placed on other citizens. With this on, they are now visible as a marker on your map anytime you check. You can also use multiple of these at the same time to track a bunch of different suspects. Number 28. If you find yourself playing around in people's garbage or just swimming around in the depths of a basement, you might get a little smelly. But you can easily wash this away by, you guessed it, breaking into a random person's house and using their shower. Number 29. You can ask the enforcer at the front desk for some helpful detective advice. Okay, maybe it's not that helpful, but I mean, he tried. Number 30. You might have noticed these spray-painted words around your city with symbols like these. It's not just normal graffiti art. These are actually passwords to black market dealers, and if you find them, they'll ask you if you know the password. If you can type it incorrectly, you'll be allowed to browse their supplies. Number 31. While you're at that black market dealer, ask yourself, has there been a murder committed lately? Because if there was, you might want to check out the sales ledger kept, which will tell you of any civilians who have purchased weapons, ammo, or any other illegal stuff in the past few days. 32. If you smash a window and come back later, it'll be boarded up with plywood. 33. Similar to guest passes, occasionally you can bribe an employee into sharing the door codes with you. 34. Sure, you could just walk around the block to get to your destination, but you could also stack a bunch of boxes in order to make a staircase for yourself. Just try not to get mugged in the process. 35. Bodies have to actually be reported by a separate NPC before the radio broadcasts the announcement to you. So if you find yourself wandering aimlessly around the city waiting for a murder notification, it's totally possible the murder has already happened, but no one's been around to report the body yet. 36. You can throw coins or other random objects in front of NPCs to distract them or make them go put it back where it came from. 37. Picking open an electrical box will give you a range of options from shutting off the surveillance cameras, powering off the lights, and even closing the large security doors. 38. On certain computers, normally in the management rooms of businesses, you can change the security settings to target everyone. But just watch out, it might turn into a bloodbath.
39. Occasionally when you take a side job for investigations or arresting, you might not get the amount of information you'd like. Sometimes if you're lucky though, you can actually turn your investigation to the person who posted or offered you the job. A lot of the time the two people are connected somehow, like living in the same building or working at the same job. 40. If you're interested in the timeline and the history behind Shadows of Doubt, according to the wiki, the current year is 1979, and such previous events have altered history, you can pause it if you want to read, but it altered history to the point where the Anglo-French Empire underneath Louis XVI is torn apart during a mustard war, which explains the radioactive fallout that we experience in-game. This leads to the birth of the United Atlantic States in 1902, and in the current year, Starch Cola, a leading megacorporation, is actually the president with enforcers replacing local police forces. It's all a really interesting read and an eerie twist on history. 41. If you happen to be running low on clues for your murder case, a good place to look a couple hours after the announcement is the newspaper. A lot of times the news will elaborate on things you missed out on, such as witnesses, neighbors, statements, writings, and more. 42. A fire will actually warm you up when you're freezing cold. 43. You've probably seen these memory card looking things and these syringes around. These are actually sync discs, which are essentially added perks for your character, and the syringes act as boosters for those perks. Just take them to a sync clinic and install them. There's all sorts of funny things like height differences, mining softwares, and one of my favorites, the ability to just run around and advertise cola products for money. 44. Have you ever wanted to rename a random business? Maybe a diner you didn't like the name of? Well, actually, you can, but you gotta know where to look. Search in your PC files for these folders. App Data, Localo, Coal Powered Games, and then Shadows of Doubt Cities. Open this CIT file, which might look ridiculously overwhelming at first, and I understand. It doesn't even look like words, but they're in there. So depending on what you're using, I'm on Windows, so Control h brings up the Find and Replace menu and all I'm going to do is replace every variation of the business that I'm trying to replace. So I'm going to replace this with ya boys. And once I go through and there are no more variations of the old business, we save the document, control S or hit save up here, and we load the game back up. And just like that, voila, you have a diner or a business named whatever you want. 45. You might find yourself needing to transfer certain evidence items between different case boards. All you have to do is unpin whatever evidence you're trying to move and then repin it on the new board. 46. Shadows of Doubt does have a small variety of mods already that can help define your gaming experience. I use a couple of these like the density mod which gives you more choices in customizing your cities, and a couple configuration mods as well that make the game a little harder for me. If you're interested in any of these, I have a further in-depth video on how to install mods to Shadows of Doubt on my channel, or linked in the description below. 47. A door wedge can also be purchased at City Hall, and with these, well, You'd assume you could wedge the door shut from anyone else trying to enter, like enforcers and such, and that's what I was trying to show, and except when I went to record it, I was waiting for the enforcers to show up, and this happened. So I'm not sure if door wedges don't work the way they're supposed to, considering enforcers and citizens can just phase right through walls. Hopefully we'll see a fix for this in the future. 48. Not only can you drink a coffee when you're tired to give you energy and wake you up, but it'll also warm you up and remove your cold debuff. 49. You're probably aware of the Codebreaker, which can also be bought at City Hall. The Codebreaker can be used to hack into computers and open locked doors and lockers. But did you know that if you remove the Codebreaker before it unlocks whatever you're hacking into, you can keep the Codebreaker to use again and you'll still acquire the password you were attempting to access? So again, just place the codebreaker on and take it right off. You'll keep the codebreaker and still receive the password once it reaches the right sequence. And finally, this brings us to number 50, which after playing for almost 90 hours, I just found this out the other night, but like the black market dealers and weapons dealers, there's also a third shady business. It's a loan shark. You can find these in basements just like the others, and you can agree to borrow $2,000 with an added $250 for interest. And what happens if you don't pay a little back every single day? Well, they'll send a hitman after you.
and that is 50 different things that you might not have known about in Shadows of Doubt. Hopefully you learned something throughout the video, but even if you didn't, maybe you're an expert, I don't know, I appreciate you watching this far into the video and just supporting the channel. If you haven't seen my other Shadow of Doubt videos, it'd be awesome if you went and checked them out. If you have any other random tips, info, features, bugs, honestly, whatever you want, drop it down in the comments below. I'll do my best to respond to everyone. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Remember that liking, commenting, and subscribing helps me out immensely, and I will see you all on the next one.